please welcome to the stage, Walter E. Jones. Yo. Hello, my friends. How are you? I like the accent. That was good. I will be speaking with an accent for the rest of the day. I don't know which accent I shall use, but I shall use something, of course. Now, what's up, y'all? How y'all doing? You good? It's Sunday. We're Sunday fun day. Let's go. Hey, hey. All right, so, um, wow. Let's, let's talk about a couple of things. One, uh, anybody know what time it is? I'm sorry. Anybody know what time it is? It's morphin' time. And that's what I'm talking about, just like that. So, listen, um, Power Rangers, once and for always. Any guys... Once and always. That's it, once and for always. Once and always. Have, has anybody seen it? Yeah? All right, you know. Zach is back after 28 years. What do you think about that? That's kind of crazy. Right? And it's crazy because I, 28 years, the show is, we're celebrating our 30th anniversary. I'm only 29. I'm not sure how that happened, but um, it's all good. You know, I'm like, all right, we're here, and we're still in business, and man, we have the most amazing fans in the world. I mean, I don't know of many shows that have run for 30 years. I, I can't think of many. I'm like, um, this show's been running for 30 years, which is incredible, in 40 countries. So uh, I am very proud to be uh, part of this franchise and, and the fact that you guys have been with us the entire time. I mean, it's been you, it's been your kids, thank you. Now I have two. It's been you, it's been your kids, it's been like, uh, your kids' kids, it's kind of weird. I was like, I don't know who to talk to when people come to my booth now. It's like, hey, how you doing? I'm looking at the kids, how are you? And I look behind them and the parents are like this. Oh my God. Oh my God. Because you guys, the parents, you guys really grew up with us. I mean, like, considering it was 30 years ago, and then you were either, I don't know, 2 to 16, 18, that makes you now 32 to 48 or something like that. And uh, what's interesting to me is, is when you guys were kids, I will walk up to you and I'll be like, hey, how you doing? And you're like, oh my God, Zach, and you're so excited. And either you did one or two things, either you run up, hug me, Zach, or you were like, oh my God, it's Zach, I can't, I can't do, all right. And, and your parents are like, no, we, we've been waiting for four hours in line, you better go say hi, you know. And, and your parents would get upset because they did wait outside for four hours in the sun for you to get up to me and be like, I don't see Zach, I don't, I don't know. And I was like, you know, it was weird. You're, you guys, the parents would get really mad, but now you guys are the parents, and so it doesn't matter, because you're like, I understand. I understand the anxiety that goes along with, you know, seeing your favorite superhero and the whole thing, but um, it's interesting to me the stories that I hear, because when you guys were kids, uh, there wasn't a lot of conversation. It was just like, hi, how nice to meet you. But now you guys are adults, and I hear stories that blow my mind. Like, I, I meet people, and they're like, uh, you know, they're like 6'4 and 250 pounds, and I'm like, you are a big dude, you know? And he's like, yeah, man, I'm shaking. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, that's crazy, you know? Um, but I, I hear stories like, you know, when I was a kid, I was bullied, and Power Rangers motivated me to be, you know, to take martial arts. And now I own three karate schools. And I'm like, wow. I mean, the fact that we were able to make such a difference in so many people's lives, um, it, it makes my heart happy, you know. Uh, when I come to these Comic Cons, the coolest thing for me is to, to put a smile on your face. I'm like, I want you to come and meet me and be like, you know, Zach was really cool. Like, that's what you always thought I would be. And I don't want to be like this guy that's like, hey, how are you? There you go. You know, I don't want to be that guy. I'm like, I got energy. I'm happy. I want you to be happy. I want you to walk away feeling like, yes, that was exactly what I wanted it to be. So um, let's talk about the beginning. How did it happen? How did that, a lot of people say, how did you get to become a Power Ranger? How did that work? Um, I grew up in Detroit, Michigan. Um, my dad was a minister and uh, my mom was a singer. So uh, I grew up in Motown, so it was like, you know, I grew up in, I, I was born in 1966, so that was like a long time ago, but uh, that was like the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, I mean, I went through like disco and, and, and hippies and, you know, Vietnam, it was like, it was kind of crazy, there was a lot that I learned, but um, uh, my dad being a minister, he was 
you know, he would speak to the church and, and people would really listen to him. He was very auditory and he was uh, a motivator for me to like sing and dance and act. My dad used to say, hey, Walt, do it, do an imitation of Howard Cosell. And I was like, I don't know how to do that. He was like, just try it, just try it. And I'm like, hi, my name is Howard Cosell. He was like, that was so good, <laughs> you know. And he would get excited and then he had me sing songs and, um, you know, I was always like the, the third shepherd you know, in the in the church play. And I, I kind of got too used to, like, being in front of people and, and losing my shyness. So in school, you know, when you're, like, uh, fourth or fifth grade, and they're like, who wants to read the next chapter? I was like, I will. I was like, I wanted to be heard. So I went from doing that to taking speech classes to doing theater in high school. Um, I was in the Thesbian Society in, in high school, and I went to this, uh, this Thesbian conference, and I had the opportunity to audition for 20 colleges. So I did a monologue, it was like a two minute monologue from this school, this play called Shoes by Ted Shine. And I did my monologue and forgot about it. It was like, you know, it was, I did it, it went well. Maybe a couple of months later in school, they called us to a, 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 you know, a, a school conference in the auditorium for only for the seniors. And we got there and they were listing off people that got scholarships and I hadn't even thought about it, but they called my name and I had three scholarships. I had one to New York, one to uh, Muncie, Indiana, and another one to California. So I picked the one furthest away from home, <laughs> went to California and uh, proceeded to get my degree in musical theater. So I studied four years of singing, dancing, acting, mime, stunts, so forth and so on, and um, walked away from school. I went to school with like some cool people. I went to school with Jamie Foxx. We used to be roommates back in the day. Uh, and uh, with John Barlman, who you guys might know from um, a number of different shows, including uh, Doctor Who um, and Arrow. Um, with um, Amy Gilliam, who was like a Grammy Award winning Hawaiian singer and, and all these different cool people. So we went to school together and I graduated went off to go work on cruise ships because I'd been inspired by somebody who said, oh, I've traveled all around the world and I, I, I've seen this place and I've seen that place and I thought, I want to do that. So they were like, you should audition. So next audition came up. I went and auditioned for Princess Cruise Lines, the love boat soon will be making... Sorry, I was having a moment. Um, uh, but I auditioned for the show and I, I got it. So I, I ended up learning all these different shows, a 40 show, a 50 show, a international show, uh, London pub show, all these different things. And I would perform as an entertainer on cruise ships as we traveled around the world to different places. I went to Mexico, to Alaska, Hong Kong, Singapore, South Pacific Islands. I went to the Caribbean. I went to all these different places, got to see all these amazing things, loved it, thought I could do this forever. But had a little voice in my head that was like, you know what, you said that you wanted to be an actor on television, you gotta give LA a shot. So why don't you go ahead and get off ships and you can always come back to this if you want to. Give it a go. So I got off ships in like 1991 and I started working in LA. I got an agent. Uh, I was doing everything from singing telegrams to bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs. I, I worked at Universal Studios. I worked, um, I worked uh, at the, the, the Beetlejuice Graveyard Review. I was a wolfie. I was like, Woo! I was a wolf. And it was a rock and roll show. And one of my songs was, thank you for letting me be myself again. Right? So I was doing that. And then I was in the Wild West stunt show as a cowboy. How you doing? My name is Felix Cassidy. I was like this whole kind of shy cowboy. And I got chased by these villains and did all these stunts, slide for lives, and had buildings fall over my head, this whole thing. And then I also did American Tell. I was a dancing mouse in one of those costumes. The worst job I ever had. Oh my God. I was like, I did six shows a day and it was hot. California hot, like summer California hot in a big old costume. It was unpleasant. I mean, like I had to drink a lot of water. Um, and then eventually I got a call from my agent and said, hey, they want to see you for this show called Phantoms. Uh, okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a superhero show. It's a pilot. If it gets picked up, you get 40 episodes. And I went, oh, that sounds great. Because as an actor, you usually get 12 episodes in a season. You don't get 40 episodes. But this show is going to be on TV every day. And uh, I was like, all right, so what are they looking for? They're looking for an actor that uh, can play a teenager 
and that can do martial arts, can do, gym, do gymnastics, and that can dance hip hop. And I was like, I can do all that. And they're like, all right, this is gonna be great, it's great. So we'll send you in. And I was like, when is the audition? It's this Friday. And I was on a plane to go to Florida because I was doing Star Search. And I was like, ah, uh, I, I, I can't go because I'm, I'm on a plane right now. I'm going to, to Orlando to do Star Search with Egg Man as a singer. And they're like, oh, that's a bummer. It's a bummer. It's a great opportunity for you. And I was like, oh, man. So I went to do Star Search. On the plane there, I caught a cold. So when we landed, I couldn't sing. I lost my voice. And um, my group that I was with, we had to let one of the background guys sing the lead, and I had to do the background. We performed. We lost. And I ended up going back home. So I was back home by Monday. And I got a call from my agent. Hey, they still want to see you. Can you go in on Wednesday? I'm like, yes. So got my sides, went in for the audition, and uh, did my acting part, which was great. And like, I was a teenager. I looked, you know, I looked really young. So I was like, I got that part. Easy. Cool. Um, and then they said, all right, so can you do any dancing? I was like, yeah. So they were like, can you show us something? So I did some hip hop. It's like, you know, did some pop locking. Hey, I was doing my thing. And they were like, all right, that was nice. That was nice. Can you do any martial arts? And I'm like, yeah. So I remembered Akata from when I studied Ishinru when I was a kid. I was the Michigan Pee Wee State Champion. So I did some, some kicks and some punches. I did some stuff. And they were like, oh, that was, that was great. Now, can you do any gymnastics? I mean, there's not a lot of space here. But if you can show us anything. And I'm like, yeah. So I, I did a back tuck. Boom. Landed. They're like, that was great. Now, can you put it all together? Uh... You mean right now? They're like, yeah, yeah, just put something together, all three things. I'm like, that is odd, okay. Um, yeah, so I thought about it. I was like, okay, so as a B-boy, when you battle, you know, you kind of like approach your opponent like you're ready to fight. So you do some stuff like you throw some punches. So I started off with some of that, and then I did a, like a swipe that looked like a kick in the air. Went to the ground, did some sweeps, came up, did some kicks, some kicks and punches, did a backflip, and then bowed out. And they were like, excellent we want to see you again so I went back for the audition again for the call back maybe a couple of days later and um, after about two weeks of auditioning they put us together in cast so we had a short cast we had a tall cast and kind of an older cast um, and we all had to audition for the networks so there's three Zacks right three Zacks three Kimberly's three Jason's three Billy's these different casts and they're gonna find out which one is the cast they want to use so <clears throat> fortunately my cast um, we had gotten together and, and talked about our, our past. So like, who are we as characters and, and what do we, what, how do we know each other? Why are we all friends? And like, we're, we're a diverse group of people. What, what do we like about each other? And we came up with like these ideas for why we were friends, how we inspired each other, how we had met, who had met first, who introduced the next person. Like, you know, these, we had a backstory. So then we, we, we went to audition we had this great chemistry as a cast. And then, you know, we had to show our physical skills. So Austin St. John, the Red Ranger, he, um, he had to fight this, this older gentleman who was, uh, I think he was Korean, but he was like a, a, a grandmaster. He was like this intense Asian guy who was like, ooh, you know, come here, Austin, you dance. He's like, you fight with me. So Austin and this guy are fighting. They're, they're doing the martial arts. And uh, the guy looks at Austin and goes, go fast. And Austin's like, you sure? Because Austin got some legs and he's, he can kick pretty fast. And he's like, yep. So they're, they're doing their thing. They're doing their martial art fight. And Austin throws a kick really fast and catches the guy right on the face. Well, this is an older gentleman. He's like a, a big black belt. I mean, he's like, like a three third don or something like that. The guy takes the hit in his face, rolls over onto the ground, gets up and looks at him. And it's like, oh my God, he's about to kill Austin. Because... <laughs> It's like, he actually hit him. It's like, and he hit him hard. And he, the dude took it and got up like, oh. And he looked at him and said, and I was like, oh, man. <laughs> and they went at it and they fought some more. And, and it, was like, it was choreography, right? So they had done the choreography, but it got caught. But I'll tell you what, Austin kicking that guy was the best thing that could have happened to him because it made everybody like on their toes like, oh my God, he's going to die. And then they finished the fight and everybody was like plotting. Oh, that was awesome, right? So they had this amazing moment. Then the Zacks had to audition, right? So we had to show our thing, um, our, our hip hop keto is what, it, what they called it. And uh, we had to develop it. So one of the guys that plays Zach 
actually ended up going on to be Michael Jackson in a movie. He was, uh, he kind of looked like Michael Jackson. He was great, very talented guy. Um, but his fighting style of hip hop keto was kind of like Michael Jackson. So he's kind of like, and I'm like, that's different. Okay. You know, it's not quite hip hop keto the way I would imagine it. Um, and the other guy was kind of like older. And so his style was more like, you know, kind of like, I'm, I'm hip hop, but I'm like, I'm not really a martial artist. I don't know how to blend it together. And then it was my turn. And I was like, oh, so I had my thing like focus out. And like at that point, I've had a couple of weeks to come up with what I want. And, and I, I have somebody come out of the audience and I have him stand and I run and I jump and I do a flip over him. I land and I go into some hip hop keto, doing my whole thing, taking it down to the ground, do some sweeps, come up and I bow out and they're like, crowd goes wild. I'm like, yeah, you know, so I end up getting a job and we get on the set, we do our pilot. The pilot is uh, a little strange. And you guys, any guys see um, the lost episode of Power Rangers? Okay, right? So that is the pilot. And it's a little strange, right? I mean, like, it's a little, it's not quite all together. Like, <clears throat> the concept, the idea is there. You know, we're a little aggressive, you know, like, uh, the, we have Audrey Dubois, the, the Yellow Ranger, and she is a major fighter. She's like, badass, but we're in the bowling alley. We get Bulk and Skull, who look like really kind of creepy. <laughs> like, Skull has one eye. Bulk has got a big dude with like a jacket and, and big hair, and we get into a fight with them at the bowling alley, and we go on to kick their butt pretty good. And um, uh, I think when the network saw that, they were like, oh, okay, this is too violent for kids. We can't do that. So after they picked it up, though, they, they liked it. They liked it enough to go, all right, well, we'll give it a shot. You know, we'll give it a shot. Saban had been trying to do it for years and finally got it off the ground. And uh, we had to redo the pilot. So we redid the pilot. And this time, we didn't fight at all. I don't think you guys have ever seen this particular pilot. But we didn't fight at all. All we did was evade. So somebody tried to attack us and we move out of the way and they fall into cake or something like that or some kind of putty or whatever. And it was like, all right, we didn't really attack at all. But then that was like not really it. So... We found a happy medium where people attack us and we would do kicks and punches and we wouldn't miss them. You know, we would ev they would evade us or we would evade them and it was kind of a nice combination. And uh, eventually the show aired and we were the number one hit show in 40 countries, right? So it was like, now we're there. We're like, we're the I remember when the show aired, the... Um, uh, producer came down, his name was Jonathan Secor. He came down and he's like, Congra me and Oster are sitting down having lunch. And he goes, congratulations guys. You are the number one kid show in the world. And me and Oster look at each other like, did he say the world? Yeah, that's, that's crazy. I mean like, as we're working every day for like 15 hours, so it's not like we really know the effects of the show, but the fact that it was in 40 countries around the world was pretty amazing. And um, like I said, now, it's interesting because now I get to travel to these 40 countries and meet people that don't speak the language that I speak and that have been fans of the show forever. And um, I don't know, it's very humbling. It's, it's very cool. So that was kind of the journey, uh, bits and pieces. I'm sure you guys probably have some questions, so I'd love to answer your questions. If you have a question, raise your hand. I'll come around with the mic. We got one here, then we'll go with here. So you're first, no pressure. Okay, so the new special just aired. How did it feel getting back together with every, not everyone, but with a whole bunch of them again after 28 years? You know, it was, uh, it was very interesting. So uh, in the special, we have David Yost, who's Billy, who's been Billy, my Billy. So David and, Yost, David and I are celebrating our 30th anniversary. We started the show. It's 30 years later. We're celebrating the 30th anniversary. And then there's Karen, Johnny, Kat, and, um, and Johnny Unglash. Now, they came in about 85 episodes after me, but they are also part of Mighty Morphin. So we're all celebrating this, this anniversary of Mighty Morphin being 30 years. But I've never worked with them. They, they replaced us, Austin, Twee, and myself in the show after we negotiated for a contract and it didn't work out and we... Um, we ended up moving along, and they were hired, and they did the movie, which was exciting, but I was jealous. <laughs> I was like, that's my movie. Give it back. Um, but um, it was cool. I've known them for years. I've known them since they did Mighty Morphin, because I lived in a house with Austin St. John. Um, 
well, he moved in with us. My buddy Danny, who's a stunt guy, was also working on the show uh, as like the Black Ranger in the costume and, and various other Rangers and putties and so forth and so on. And I had two other roommates that were in the entertainment industry. So we had these amazing parties at my house all the time. Like the parties was crazy. So uh, sometimes the helicopter would go over the house and we're like, what's up, guys? <laughs> it's warping time down here. This is crazy. Um, but... Uh, they came to some of our parties. So I met them after I left the show and they'd come to the parties and they're like, yo, this is, you know, this is the new uh, Black Ranger, Red Ranger and, and Yellow Ranger. And I was like, oh, we met and they were cool, it was nice. And so I've known them for years, but we had never worked together besides the order, which almost happened, but didn't quite happen. They're still working on it, by the way. Um, but it was cool to work, to go back and work with David again, yes, I mean, David again, because David and I have maintained this relationship as friends, you know, and, and we're like Walter and David, and David's, David's different, David's kind of, he's much more, he's much different than I am, he's kind of particular, and he's, you know, a little, um, he's not as uh, uh, free as I am, I'm like, I'm like, hey, and David's a little more put together, so. Reserved, um, reserved. Yeah, reserved. That's the word I was looking for, yes. And, uh, and so that dynamic also crosses into our characters because Billy is a little more reserved, right? 30 years later, did Billy still, like, Billy's running things. He's, like, got a company of his own. He's doing the whole thing. And Zach's still a little bit like, hey, I'm out here. What's up? I'm a, I'm a politician. I like to talk to people. I'm, like, doing the thing, which was interesting that I was a politician. But um, uh, I like the Omega Rangers version where I actually am a... Um, a ranger traveling through the uh, the the grid, helping other rangers. I like that that concept. I kind of think that I was a uh, I was a, a, a congressman, but that's my clone. <laughs> Meanwhile, Zach is off like doing his thing as an Omega Ranger. You know, I think that would be a cool storyline. But um, uh, it was really cool to work with David again. It was very surreal to be on the show, um, to walk into the command center. Uh, which I haven't seen in 30 years, right? And 28 years. I was like, there's a lot that's happened since I've been gone, right? I, so I had to take that in. And like, there's a lot of history. Like, you know, Zordon's no longer there. And I, I'm look, I keep looking at this tube, like, that's where Zordon's supposed to be, but he's not there. It's something that happened with, you know, David, uh, with Billy in the past. And I wasn't there to you know, to be part of it, to help. So I have some guilt about that, you know, like maybe if I was there, we could have saved Zordon, maybe that wouldn't happen. You know, like Zach's character has, you know, feelings about him not being active as a ranger uh, and not being there for his friends when they needed him because he was off doing other things at some other point. But, um, but I'm back. So I'm like, I was happy to, to go through that and then to be in the juice bar. Oh my gosh, Ernie's Juice Bar. I was like, yo, this place is so much smaller than I remember. <laughs> you, you remember when, like, when you go, like, when you graduate from high school and you go, um, you go back to your school, your middle school, your elementary school, and you walk through the hallways and you see the locker, and you're like, this seems so much bigger before. Like, it seems, it's so different. I was like, I'm so much bigger than what that used to be now. So it was kind of like that in the Juice Bar. Um, but just surreal and uh and i was it made me happy i was like you know this is cool um i think the biggest part for me was when i walked away from the show i didn't expect to leave the show i expected to negotiate for the contract get a better deal and come back to work come back do the movie do some more tv shows in fact that was part of the negotiation i was like all right you guys want to come back and we'll do more episodes we'll do the movie and then eventually you'll you'll go away and but that's not the way it worked out they just hired three new people they paid the other three more money to stay and we were kind of like oh okay that's that's what happened okay cool so um i didn't get i didn't have any closure because i didn't expect to leave the show but now I was back on the show after 28 years. 28 years? That is a long time, man. That's like, think about 28 years. That means you graduated high school, you graduated from college, you met a woman, you got married, you had a baby, and now you're 28. You know, like that's a lot of life that happened in 28 years. And I have not been on the show since 28 years. So to be back was very surreal. Um, and, and like I said, I hadn't had any closure, but... 
at the end of the wrap of the show, they go, uh, I'll do our final scene. David and I, I think our final scene was the scene where we're talking about um, how are we going to tell men about her mom, right? And so we're in that. We're in Zach's house, Zach and Men's house, um, or Trini's house at that time. And uh, we do the scene. It's emotional. Me and David are going at it. And, you know, we're finished. And they go, okay, that's a wrap on Walter Jones. And I'm like, wow, those are the words I've been waiting for for 28 years. I've not had a rap from this show. I've, this show has been part of my life for 30 years. It's like I walk around in the world. I'm in the grocery store shopping for, for stuff, and I hear dee, 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 dee. And I, I'm like, and somebody's like this. <laughs> I, was, I knew it was you. I knew it was you, right? So it's, it's followed me around throughout my life for 30 years, and um, I didn't have closure. And at that moment, I felt like it's complete. I, I finally have the closing of of this moment, you know? And even if it's, uh, because it's a possibility, it could turn into more, we'll see. I don't know, but that moment for me was great and uh, made my heart happy. And I I got a little teary. I was like, I tried to do a speech to the rest of the people. I was like, thanks guys, I just can't do it. I was like, okay, and I became a soprano. (laughs) And I was like, okay, I can't finish this sentence. That's all right, you know what I mean. Um, But it it was amazing to, to be there and to feel that. And I was proud to be um, Trini's daughter's guardian because Trini obviously was very important to me um, as one of my original cast members. And, the, and it, it was very surreal too to, to be mourning her as Zach, but also be mourning her as Walter. You know, like she was really my friend. She really is no longer here. And I wish she was here. I wish she could meet you guys. I wish she could feel the love that you guys give us because you would be amazed by her and she would be amazed by you. And so I, I'm sorry that she's missed out on that. And then, you know, also with J, JDF, you know, the fact that uh, we were able to pay tribute to him in the show as well. Um, and he was still around at the time, but when it aired, it's like, you know, he was no longer with us. So I was really happy that we were able to kind of put all that in a package for everybody to uh, to take in and and you know just uh, we kind of be all together in, in in this moment you know next question all right right over here so um with uh, like all six of you and everything uh, in the uh, original season what was your uh, fondest memory or, or your fun- funniest memory. Fondest or funniest memory? So it's interesting because I get this question at every con and it always changes because there's so many memories. It was like there was 85 episodes, you know? So um, <laughs> we, we played gags on each other all the time. You know, we would, we would do fun stuff like the boys especially would be having like these testosterone competitions. Like who can do a handstand the longest? You know, who can do a handstand and then press it down into a flat thing and then come up and we would challenge each other to do these things. Like here, I learned this new kick. And so we'd be trying to do kicks and, and flips. We'd take the mini tramp and we'd go and we'd be running to do like these flips. And we all had different skill sets, but we we're all inspiring each other to be better. So um, Austin was great with hand stuff, like martial arts. So we do pak sao, lap sao. We'd be doing this hand stuff and we're just playing with that and like getting fast. And, and then we were able to incorporate that, incorporate that in the show. Jason Frank was amazing with like kicks and, and punches. And so he had that that triple jump kick that he would do, um, tornado kick. And I could do that, but I wanna do it because he had already done it. So I was like, I did other things, but it inspired me. It's like, I would run, eventually I would run and I would do like, I would do three kicks in one, I would three, you know, a jump split kick and another kick before I landed. It's like, so we, we upped each other every time. We kept inspiring each other. And you know, Amy Jo and Twee, like, we would help each other out to do different things. Um, those were some of my happy moments, just the camaraderie that we had, the, the, the partnership, and, you know, and, and us enjoying this moment together where we, we were walking in the world and we were dealing with this fame that was new and, and odd and uh, exciting for us. Uh, you know, I had the same experience that the rest of the, cat had, rest of the cast had when you know, our, I would go to the grocery store and I looked to the side and my face was on the cover of the TV guide and on Disney Adventures. There was like, I had two publications there with my face on. I'm like, that's me. 
So the same thing happened to Amy Jo. Same thing happened to David Yost, Austin St. John. And like, we were all going through this at the same time. And nobody knows what that feels like except for the original cast. Because we all had that moment where we went from nothing to something. And finally, we were like, this is crazy. You know, it's like, it was surreal too because it's not like we could really experience Experience it because we were so busy. We were shooting four episodes every two weeks. So, um, and we were not shooting the scripts in order. So it was like we would do, we shoot according to the set. So if we were in the juice bar, when we were always in the juice bar at some point, we would do four different scenes in the juice bar in a day. And so I got to go change clothes. And this episode, we'd be like, wait, in this episode, who are we fighting? Oh, oh it's Frankenstein, the monster. And, oh, this is Porky Pig. We just had the food fight. So we had to like do all this like in our brains, kind of put it together. Where are we? What are we doing? Why are we fighting? Like, what's the occasion? And, and just us experiencing that whole thing together and uh, was amazing. We also... Some a moment that I remember, we uh, we were able to do stuff like we went to um, to a children's hospital one day in in our costumes, right? So we go to the children's hospital, and it's the wing where they like everybody's they're they're um, uh, these kids are really sick, you know. They've been in the hospital a long time, and they might not survive, you know. So um, we're there just to make them happy. So we're walking through the hallways, and some kids can't even come out the room because you know they're they're susceptible to getting sick. So they're just looking through the we look through the window, and a kid, you know, some kids that hadn't smiled in months because they've been so sick would like see us and just light up, and they were like, that moment, those moments were like this amazing for me, and I'll, they'll always live with me because it's like, man, just uh, just to be able to like smile at somebody and make them happy, I think we all felt that we all felt that energy and and um it's it continues on to this day you know it's like the fact that I can just shake somebody's hand and they're like oh my god uh, you know like oh my god and I'm like it's nothing for me I'm just shaking your hand and say hello and being kind to you and you walk away with this energy that makes me very happy makes my my heart happy so uh, those are some of the, the exciting moments I think we shared together next question all right right over here um, aside from obviously <laughs> the original, which you are a part of, what iteration or like seasons of Power Rangers do you like really resonate or like consider like your favorite and why? All right, so this Have is you the ever, thing. Have like, met the actors I, for it? This is always, I'm sure, very disappointing for you guys because <laughs> I didn't really watch the show after I left the show. I was like, one, I was, I was kind of pissed off. I was like, I'm not watching a show. I'm like, they took away my opportunity to be in my movie. I'm like, I earned that movie. So the fact that I wasn't in it, it bothered me. And I was like, uh, I'm not watching that, you know. Um, and then I was also grown and working. Uh, I had a show on Nickelodeon called Space Cases. I went on from doing that to do like Disney shows, uh, Brink, and I did Moesha, In the House, Family Matters. I was like all these different shows, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, CSI, like all these shows I worked on as an actor. So I didn't really have the time either to continue to follow Power Rangers. And Although I've met a lot of the cast members from a lot of the different seasons, um, and I, I know them, I know them more than I know their shows, their characters and shows. So it's difficult for me to answer that question. Although I have seen some of Time Force, and I know all those guys, and I understand that that cast was an exceptional cast, um, and um, they had great writing because apparently they were really actor actors right so I think me being an actor actor that would probably be what I would want to go and do the time for us I don't know the whole storyline but what I do know of it sounds interesting to me yeah I, but here's a question for you what season do you think you see me in say it again Jungle Fury, okay. Okay. All right. I, I had a gentleman ask that question the other day, and he said that he would have put me in, um, uh, oh, what's the other one about, uh, oh, dinos, Dino Rangers. Yeah. Probably because of the dinosaurs, right? Like, Mastodon, there we go. Um, next question. 
they here. One of the things I always wondered about just as a kid and growing up and, and watching the show, with the costuming, what was it that was most difficult about getting in and out of the suits? Getting in and out of the suits? <laughs> it, was like, it was so difficult, bro. It was like, it, I couldn't do it by myself. I, I needed an assistant because I could put on my, my um, I could put on the legs up to my waist, put on my boots, I could put on my gloves, I put on my neck, my neck piece or whatever, but I couldn't zip up the suit. It's like the zipper's all the way down here. It's got to get up here. That's never going to happen with my, my dexterity. So, um, yeah, if, I, if we put on the suit and then I had to go to the bathroom, I needed some help. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, little help. Hey. And like Austin likes to say there were a couple of times on the set where he, uh, he almost became the Yellow Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> right so uh it was that was the difficult part and obviously the helmet you know wearing the helmet um it takes away a lot of your visibility i mean i can only see so much and so um we didn't do a lot of the stuff in the suits meaning we didn't i didn't you never saw me fighting in the suits you saw zach fight He's, zach was fighting i fought putties and so forth and so on but i didn't do the explosions i didn't jump off of the buildings that was like japanese footage at the time um, I did transitional things. So, like, you would, would, would stop a fight, I would come off, I would take off the helmet kind of thing. So that kind of thing I would do. And maybe I did a, a few a few active things. You know, maybe I did a flip or two in, in the suit, but not a lot. It wasn't like, uh, you know, it wasn't us in the suits all the time doing, like, all the big stunts. And I was never, we were in the dinosaur, one, the Megazord one time. And I remember that because it was an interesting day. It was like they, they had built the set that looks like the visor of, of uh, the Megazord. And so, you know, all five of us are in there in our suits. And they sit us down in there and they're like, and the director's like, okay, so we had never done this before. But it was like, all right, you get hit from the right. And we're like, oh, you get hit from the right. Oh, all right, they kick you in the face. You're like, oh. You know, like we're doing this in the suits, and it was like, it was bizarre. And I was like, we did that one day. I don't know if they used the same footage over and over again, because maybe they did. They did that with Zordon. Zordon only shot one day. He like came on the set. He had hair. He auditioned in front of us, uh, and we had a number of people do the voice. You know, and like some guys were like a little quirky Rangers, and like almost like the Alpha. And then you know, Zordon comes in. I mean, uh, David Fielding comes in. He goes Rangers, and, and we were like, ooh. That's our Zordon right there, you know. So he did his thing, and then they made him shave his hair off on the day. He had long hair. He shaved his hair off. They made him bald. They painted him blue, and then they filmed him, and we never saw him again. <laughs> it, was like, it was like we just saw him on, line, on screen. And so, you know, you don't really see his mouth move, so they would use that footage of him from that one day and over and over again in every episode. Um, it's interesting because now I know David Fielding. Like, I, I met him then, but I hadn't seen him. But since the Comic-Con scene has been around, uh, we, we travel together, and I, I, I got to know him. He's a really nice guy and a very intelligent guy. He's an Arthur, and um, I call him Papa Z. What up, Papa Z? He was like, hey, what's up, Zach? <laughs> so that's cool. Um, uh, I forgot the base of that question. What was it? I, I, I start rambling. Oh, in and out of suit. Yeah, I went all the way to the left, didn't I? Okay. Like, next question. Next contestant. Um, hello. First of all, thank you for being here. Glad to be here, bro. Um, so, fortunately, you were only there for two seasons, and then you was replaced with uh, Johnny Young Bush, Adam. So, did you guys, like, exchange, like, any words of advice or any pleasantries before your departure? No. <laughs> I didn't know him. I like I, it was it was all of a big boohoo. It was like I was we were negotiating for contracts and all of a sudden it was the news that they had new Rangers. And I was like, "What? I thought we were negotiating." Um, oh, well, I guess we're not negotiating anymore. So they're going to do the movie. We're not going to do the movie? Oh. Well, that sucks, you know. And like and so I didn't know him. I just knew there was a, you know, new guy wearing the Black Ranger suit and I was like, "That's odd but my roommate Danny was working as a stunt guy he worked on the sun, on Power Rangers maybe for 10 seasons so he knew everything he knew all the gossip he knew everybody and he was like yeah no you know this, this uh this new kid he's actually pretty good 
And like he's doing a great job as the Black Ranger. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I'm I'm happy that the Black Ranger is still like, you know, still keeping up the character. You know, he had to live up to something. But you know, he he did a great job. I was happy about that. Um and I didn't we didn't have any words of passing on any advice. They obviously wanted him to be very different from Zach, you know. So he was his own character, his own ranger. Um and uh and I you know, I think he did a great job. So um there were no words passed between us. Um, it's interesting, and Power Rangers once and always, it's the first time Johnny Young, Bosch and I have been on camera together um, and as Rangers, you know. So uh, in that final scene, when he and Aisha are leaving, uh, where David and I and Rocky and Kat are on one side and Aisha and, and Adam are on the other side and they're saying goodbye, and I was like, this feels very... Uh, this feels odd, you know, because like it feels like we feel very isolated from one another. And the director was like, "Well, what, what do you what do you think? How do you feel about the scene?" I said, "I feel like Zach would be kind and, and like would be you know like touchy. He would be like I would want to like comfort him and not comfort, but like." say goodbye to both of them. And he was like, all right. So when my line came, then I walked over to Aisha, I gave her a hug. All right, guys, I'm dismissing them because we got to go back to work. But I walk out, give her Aisha a hug, and I walk over to Johnny, I give him a hug, and we kind of share a moment, which I thought was important for our characters because you need to know that there's no beef between us. We're like, we respect each other, you know? Like, Zach and, and, and Johnny and Boss, two black rangers, we're on the same team. So it's all good. It's all love. You know what I mean? Next question. All right, right back here. So I have a weird question. Weird. So you were in Forever Red. Yes. But you weren't a ranger. So how was your experience being on the other side, so to speak? Oh, I wasn't going to be in that episode at all because it's Forever Red and not I was never red. <laughs> so it was kind of a thing where it was, I felt respected. It was like, listen, um, we're doing a special episode. It's Forever Red. It's all the Red Rangers come back for this episode. But we like you to be part of it. You know, we know the show's not union and you can't come back to it. But would you consider doing a voiceover? I was like, yeah. So I voiced, I voiced the, uh, the monster Garrick, I guess. I didn't know that until recently one of the fans told me, you were Garrick. I was like, oh, okay, that's who I was. Um, I don't remember what the voice was like because I haven't seen the episode in a while, but um, it was cool. I was, I was happy to be part of it. And I guess I did two different, I did a voice on another something. I think Mega, Mega Force. I think I did a voice of a monster on Mega Force as well. But I wasn't aware what monster I was. I just know I, I went in and did the voice. And voice acting is something I do. I, I do, I've done video games. I've done uh, over probably 100 different projects in film and television um, as a voice actor. But looping, which is different from just being one character, I am many characters within the, 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 the project. So um, I'll put it like this. If you're looping um, in your loop group, and you're watching a movie, let's say, like I was in, I, I was in a lot of different things. I did, uh, la, 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 la. I was in Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. So, um, and that, you know, you got your main characters are doing their voices, right? And they're done by the A-list actors. And then you have characters that were not done, that are empty, like, you know, that they don't use extras for, they use other voice talent. So I did like maybe five or six different voices of characters. I was like, I was like, there was one ep one part in that movie where he was being attacked by like, m like water monsters or something while he was in a house. And so I was like, <laughs> like, doing voices like that, like something. And then I did some other things like, you know, while he was flying in the sky, stuff that was coming at him and I was voice, you know, I would just diff do different things. So uh, I've done that in over, you know, like probably 90 or 100 different things. Um, so I did a lot of voiceover work. Um, and I love that. That's another thing. So, yeah, do, doing some voices of some monsters on the show is just uh, part for the course. All right. We have another question back here. Hey, uh, so if you weren't the Black Ranger, what other color would you be? Um, oh, yeah, that's easy. I'll, I'll be the Black Ranger. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what. I did... Um, 
I, when we went to New Zealand and we shot Power Rangers once and always, um, they were fitting me for the costume, for the Black Ranger costume, which, you know, it's been 28 years. I was like, okay, I hope I can still fit this. Um, but I, I did pretty good. I was like, ah, I feel kind of fit. I worked out, done my intermittent fasting. I was ready. And um, they didn't have a Black Ranger costume to fit me in. So they put me in a Blue Ranger costume and they, they sewed it up like they did all the, the, the fittings, like the safety pin every there and everywhere that needed to be tightened or loosened. And I'm wearing this Blue Ranger costume um, with these ugly boots. They were like not white boots, they were like brown boots that hadn't been colored yet. But I would not want to be the Blue Ranger. It doesn't look good on me. It's like, that is not my color. It's not my color. And when we got the costumes, um, the wardrobe said, oh, hey, our costumes will come in. You guys, they're, they're in the wardrobe room. So I'm the first one to walk in. I'm like, oh, I'm excited. I got to see this. I walk in. I see the Red Ranger costume. I'm like, ooh, that's nice. That's the Red That's nice. But the next one I see is the Black Ranger costume. I'm like, ooh, I, I want this one. They're like, that's yours. I was like, yes. Right? So I was excited to wear the Black Ranger costume. That's the one I liked the most. I didn't really like the blue one. The green one wasn't around at the time because uh, it was just the red, you know, when in the beginning it was just black, red, and blue. Uh, I wasn't going to be pink or yellow. <laughs> and at that time, in 1993, when you think about it, uh, the Red Ranger was the leader. In 1993, Zach was not going to be the, the leader. That wasn't going to be it. Not for the origins of, of Power Rangers, right? So I wasn't going to be that, that guy. I was going to be, um, uh, I wasn't going to be, the nerd, necessarily, the smart nerd. I was going to be the hip, cool, athletic guy, which was Zach, and happened to be the Black Ranger. And I guess the way they decided that was in the Japanese footage, the Red and the Black Ranger are always kind of together. And if the Red Ranger falters, then the Black Ranger is like the second lead, right? So, um, yeah, and just that's the way it worked out. And I, I was happy to wear the Black Ranger costume for a number of reasons. One... I'm a, I'm, a young, I'm a young guy from Detroit, Michigan, right? The Motor City, Motown, and uh, I'm proud to be black. And I was like, I'm black, wearing the black costume, first black superhero on live action TV, let's go, right? I was excited, yeah. So my answer is gonna be, yes, the Black Ranger. That's what I'm gonna be every time. All right, more questions, raise your hand. We no other a, questions. We have a repeat question over here. All right. Oh, not a repeated question, but a repeat questioner. I got you. Sorry. So, in terms of all the, how do I word this correctly? Sorry. What would be the most like, like what scene would you want to have done differently in, uh, in the original Power Rangers? What scene would I wanted to do? Differently, huh? Okay. Uh, well, hmm. Uh, Zach was often scared of animals. <laughs> like he was scared of the snake. He was scared of the moths. He was scared of the tarantula, the spider. Right. Um. Yeah, I, I, I don't have that. So, like, I think uh, maybe I would have, uh, although Zach always conquered his fears, and it was to motivate you to conquer your fears. So, um, I don't know. Maybe I, he would have been scared of moths. You know, I like, the moths are, that's, that's a bit much. I'm not running for these moths. These moths are going to get me, right? I was like, well, they're going to put me to sleep, right? They're going to make me go to sleep. They made the kids fall asleep. I should run from them. I should not just be like, yo, but if I had a can of Raid, it would have been better. I'd be like, shh, how about that, moths, shh, right? That, that would have been cool. What's that? Like Mothman. Mothman? <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? That would have been a different. Um. But I, I don't know the I would have changed a lot. Um, I think maybe perhaps uh, Zach probably would have been, got to be the leader more. I think that would have been cool. Um, there were often times where Jason got into a battle with uh, like Godar, like the green candle, that whole thing, uh, where he was caught in the dimension and I kind of took over for a while. Um, I think, you know, just Zach having the ability to be the leader more, I think would have been exciting for me. All right, I think we have time for one more question. And one more question. Looks, yes, looks sir. Like we have someone over here. Oops, sorry. Uh, hi, so you've 
spoke a little bit earlier about uh, knowing about the Omega Ranger story for Zach. Yes. Um, and I don't know if you've heard of the other great storylines that they've given Zach in the Boom Comics, uh, such as the, they made a small green candle arc for Zach of like, oh, you can be the Green Ranger, and Zach being like, that's cool, but no, <laughs> I'm yeah. not going to be your your bitch boy. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Not 18 plus, I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> but do you think that if there is the chance for you to come back as Zack again, there might be the ability for them to bring in the Omega Ranger power for you? And would you want that? I think so. I think, um, I mean, I would imagine that that might be part of the storyline because um, the cool thing about Power Rangers right now, and for 30 years later, uh, there's all kinds of possibilities. And there's been so many different iterations of the Rangers within the grid. It's like, you can tell that uh, we, we, we were in space, we're here, we're there, we're like, you know, in different time zones, different, like, you know, different ages. And so, yeah, I think um, Zach being an Omega Ranger and traveling to different dimensions to help different Rangers uh, would be a, a great story be a great storyline for Zach and, and Billy and, and whoever else to go around and, um, and be part of that whole system. Uh, that would be awesome. Well, thank you so much. Is there anything that you're working on now that you can share with us? All right, so guys, check it out. I have a music project coming out. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I love music and I love dancing and a lot of my music is about dancing. So I just want to let you know Keep an eye out. Uh, I'll be making an announcement probably on my Instagram. If you're not on Instagram or Facebook, uh, my Instagram is Walter E. Jones. Simple. At Walter E. Jones. Follow me and uh, support with my music if you get a chance. I hope you guys enjoy it when it comes out, all right? If I all right. Seen you, Big round of applause. Thank you, Walter. If I haven't seen you, come on by the table and say hello. All right, guys. Peace. Hey there. This is Nolan North, and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Good for you. Very proud of you. Now go watch more. Oh, and have fun and follow your fandom. I like that. I like it a lot. <laughs>